One of the things I'm really passionate about is HDR. In fact, I've been doing HDR photography for about five or six years now. And I'm really excited about what Photoshop CS5 has got for the HDR photographer. Check this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Mini Bridge here. And this shows us our files here. It's a representation of, of Bridge, just a little small one. It works pretty good for finding things pretty quickly. It has some limitations. But we can launch Big Bridge just by clicking there. Um, what we could do is we could open these bracketed shots to merge them. But opening them on the desktop and then merging them is very messy. What we want to do is do it from Bridge. So that's going to right click here. And I'm going to see this option that says Reveal and Bridge. Click there and it takes us right through to Bridge. Now what we want to do is we want to merge these different shots together. But before I do, let me explain to you what HDR really is. HDR is high dynamic range. And here we're looking at a photograph of everything here. This is what you would see with your human eye a little bit more, where you can see the detail outside, you can see the detail here. Now the camera is not able to capture that much detail because the sensor is a little bit limited. So let's look at, say, something we might capture with the camera. Maybe this is a good exposure here. And you can see with this single exposure, we've captured the floor pretty nicely. Uh, maybe a little white balancing issue here, but it's not too bad. Uh, but outside, notice it's completely blown out. It's just white. And in the area here, notice that this is very dark and the detail is being lost in this beautiful section here. I'm just scrolling through different images here as I'm doing that. Um, so what we need to do is we need to uh, capture multiple shots. So here's the first one where we've really stopped this down and you can see that we've exposed this for outside. Notice we've got all this detail to people outside, but in order to get a proper exposure, the inside becomes very, very dark. Then in order to just grab another exposure here, where we want to bring out the detail here, so we've got beautiful detail here now, but you know the outside's completely blown out, and so is pretty much the rest of the interior. We could probably recover this a little bit, but these areas here are clipped, we'll lose that detail. So the idea of HDR is high dynamic range, which is where we're going to take several shots. So I've taken one, two, three, four, five, six shots that are bracketed two stops apart to enable to capture the entire dynamic range of the image. And now we're going to go up under Tools, we're going to go to Photoshop, and then we're going to choose Merge to HDR Pro. Now, we get a little warning here because I didn't use RAW files. Now, typically when I work in HDR, I always use RAW files. The reason I use RAW files is because there's more dynamic range than there is in a JPEG. A JPEG cannot have more than 8 bits of information, so shooting in a JPEG uh, and in for HDR is kind of pointless. And also merging it together, um, like some people say use photomatics for merging it, not a good idea because photomatics converts it to a JPEG right on, on conversion where you're throwing it down to an 8-bit image. Anyway, here we are. In HDR Pro, let me just drop this down a little bit so you can see everything clearly. And what we've got is we've merged these six images together. And notice now we've got a photograph where the entire dynamic range is showing. Notice outside we can see. Inside we can see beautifully. We can see the detail here. Now, we've got a little thing that's happened now. The new thing is called Remove Ghosts. Sometimes when things move in a photograph, we can see some ghosting. Not really too bad in here. Although, let me, let me uh, actually zoom in a little bit at 100% here. And maybe you can see a little ghosting here because, you know, the people were in both exposures, people walking here and then people walking there. So we click this option here. This says remove ghosts. So what this is going to do is it's actually going to go in here and it's going to set one of the images, which is actually setting as this one here, for de-ghosting. Now, it doesn't work so well in this photograph, but this works really well in ones, you know, where perhaps we've got some wind blowing in some trees, we've got some clouds moving, we've got more movement. And what we can do is we can find we don't get the result we want, we can click on a different image and set that as a ghosting image. Notice the green appears around it, and now it sets that as a de-ghosting image. Let's go back here, though, because in this case we're not really too worried about it, and we're just making some adjustments. Uh, I've pretty much made the adjustments that I want. Maybe we could play around with the gamma, brighten up a little bit. Takes away the mid-tone contrast a little bit. Turn it to the left, makes it more contrasty. We can brighten it up a little bit with the exposure. But be careful, we don't want to blow out everything outside. And you can see we're starting to get ourselves a pretty decent uh, tone mapped image. This is the second phase in uh, the HDR. The first part is merging it together, and then the second part is tone mapping. Now, this is all new in Photoshop CS5. Um, notice we're able to tone map this in a beautiful way. We can click on curves here. This is our local adaption. We can actually play around with the curves if we wanted and, you know, just really fine tune this. You know, adding a little more contrast, whatever we want to do. 
Notice we've got this detail and shadows and highlights. That's what HDR is all about. Now, if you want to go for the more stylized look, this is a very more natural look here. We can change it. We can uh, start playing around with some things like hit the detail, push the detail all the way up. Notice we started to get that real stylized look. Um, we can, you know, if we really want to play around with the strength, turn that up, gives it a crazy blown out look, change the radius. And, you know, we start to get these kind of trippy looking things here. Uh, I don't like to turn the radius too high, even for a stylized HDR. And the reason for that is because when we do that, you know, it starts to get these halos around there and it just doesn't look good. We also have some presets in here. If you click on here, notice that we'll see a drop down list with presets. We can hit flat, which is, you know, going to give us a very natural look. Take a second. There we go. Very soft, very natural looking. Um, we could go all the way up to here to surrealistic high contrast. And notice we get this really blown out, funky look, maybe a little bit cinematic. Um, we can also save our own presets, you know, so we can go here, you know, we're, we're doing a more photorealistic one. Let's bring up the gamma a little bit and maybe drop the exposure a bit. And we can play around with the shadows here. Just removing the shadows a little, letting a little more light. We can play with the highlights. See, that's recovering highlight now. And if we want, we can just go down and we could save that as a preset just by, then we just go here, save preset, and then I'll just give it my name, Colin. And at any time, we can recall that. Now just click OK to apply. And now what it's done is it's just converted this down to a 16-bit image. And you can see we're seeing all this detail in the shadows and highlights. One of the other things you could do if you want is an option in there where you can choose to open it up as a 32-bit image. And if you open it up as a 32-bit image, um, you can do more refinements. Now, I didn't want to get too much into HDR. If you want to learn more, check out. I've got HDR and Photoshop videos and also tutorials on PhotoshopCafe.com.